think will happen at the end of the year with regards to the, to the ratings downgrade? We must be optimistic, eh? I think we must be optimistic. Um, we have done um, as much as we can do. I mean, uh, in, pack, in putting together both the fiscal and the growth package that we think um, should convince the rating agencies that we are in the right direction. And, and the interaction so far has been very good, I mean, uh, with all of them. Now, do you think projects like today, the C3 projects, and companies like Sussel will be viable in future if we are downgraded? Downgrading will be very um, uh, negative for everything, quite frankly. I mean, it, it pushes the cost of borrowing, and therefore it, it hits directly in our social programs, because remember that we borrow a lot. I mean, our cost of borrowing at the moment is sitting at 147 billion per annum. Imagine if you add that, you, that, that will also shoot through the roof. But, but it also um, uh, creates a negative investment environment. So you, you are unlikely, if, if in that environment, investment becomes a difficult thing to have private sector will hold their money instead. So it's important that for everybody, and it's important for ordinary people, the workers and everybody else, it affects everything, our bonds and everything else that you think of. So it's not just a problem for big business, it's a problem that affects even the working class in a very direct way. Now, do you think that the private sector could save the country? Look, I mean, there's a, it's, it's not the private sector or public sector, it's a collaboration. I mean, if we work together, and, and we've shown now that it's possible to, to map uh, a path. I always tell people that we, we South Africa, where we are, as a result of uh, a big and great agreement uh, in 94, remember? And, and to sustain the path that we've taken, we need to go back and strengthen that, renew that, and, and maybe review some of it, and, and, and come up with new ideas about growth and inclusive growth. Now, we just heard from the AG that many of the country's peristatals are guilty of irregular, fruitless and unauthorised expenditure. What will government do, what will particularly Treasury do to rein this in and, and just to, to curb a repeat next year, in the next financial Look, year? Look, I mean, there's a lot of work already happening to improve. Firstly, I think part of it is the bulk of it is procurement related um, so you've got we've got to almost revamp and uh, strengthen our procurement system in government and processes and, and make them more transparent we've started that process i think we we now have a portal that you can you register there but you can keep all the companies that have received uh, work from government in the portal it gives you a chance to pick list those who want to pick list and so, so there's a there's a lot of work in, in terms of procurement reform that's happening in government um, as it were now coupled with that is capacity building program where you beginning to look at capacity gaps within different departments of government and and different institutions and 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 beginning to plug that gap we've established in treasury um, um, an office of uh, um, chief procurement officer that actually essentially has the ability to review procurement processes across the board. It is a difficult thing because in, in part it reflects capacity weaknesses, uh, in part it's systems uh, problem, in part it also can be linked to um, uh, corruption and plundering. So it's a, it's a complex situation, but I think essentially it is systemic. Mm -hmm.